Hello, wine abbers. My name is Jesse Meekum, and this is podcast number 85 for You Need a Budget, where we teach you four rules to help you stop living paycheck to paycheck, get out of debt, and save more money. I received an email from Brett a little bit ago, a week ago or so, and uh, he was asking me specifically how WineAb can, let's see where it is, um, how to use WineAb as a freelancer where my monthly income is not fixed. Uh, he says, I have some fixed expenses and can create a budget based on those and variable costs, but do you have a recommended workflow for budgeting for budgeting, for budgeting for a fluctuating income? Yes, I do. When I first built YNAB, that was on a variable income, not wildly variable as some freelancers are, but it was variable nonetheless. And I saw that it did not work to predict income because it was always wrong. And you would spend all this time going down to the penny, especially at that time because we were so broke. Uh, I'd spend all that time basically balancing things and following rule one and giving every dollar a job. And then the amount that you guessed was wrong. And the amount you guess is always, always wrong. So what I would recommend first for freelance variable income situations, or even those on salary, is just budget the money you have on hand. So anytime new money comes into your life, as our teachers always say in our classes, ask yourself, what does that money have to do before you're paid again? And you may not know when you are paid again, but you still will know what the money needs to do. Everyone has a really good sense of the next most important thing. There's always a lot of clarity there. Okay, I just got paid. What do I do? They can answer that question. And I imagine that Brett here could, any other person in that situation, they can answer that very easily. Oh, yeah, I've got to pay the rent. Or, oh, I've got to pay... You know, I got to buy gas and fill up the car or whatever. So when on a variable income or not, always just budget the money you have on hand. Don't worry about forecasting far, far out into the future. It'll just be changed. And the only thing it maybe does is give you a warm fuzzy about look how things could be. But it is not how things will be. And we focus more on reality and on the here and now. By here and now, I mean, you know, within 30 days or so. Of course... I'm going to contradict myself now because you will look far ahead when thinking about your expenses. So with income, conservatively, you deal with what you just have on hand. With expenses, you look far into the future and start saying, okay, how will I deal with those bigger expenses? And Brett mentioned that he had some fixed expenses, but he also has, I'm sure, as we all do, some Rule 2 rainy day expenses where they're larger and less frequent than his normal monthly expenses like Christmas or an anniversary or property taxes or summer camps for the kids, whatever it may be. They come up every once in a while and they're fairly large or at least larger than normal. And if you don't plan for them, then you will have a problem. This is where freelancers and any of those people on variable incomes really run into trouble. They have... And they run into trouble when they get a large inflow, not when they're just barely making ends meet. The freelancer that's barely making ends meet, at least they know, hey, I'm barely making ends meet. What's scary is the freelancer that has a big windfall and then doesn't use that windfall appropriately. By windfall, I mean, you know, a better than normal month or whatever. So you have this real estate agent that closes on several houses all at once and then has this big windfall. All this money comes in at one time and they don't allocate the surplus money appropriately. And allocating the surplus for freelancers is really where you can make a big impact and even out your cash flow. So I was at uh, the pool picking up the kids from swim lessons a week ago. And they over in the kiddie pool, they have this big playground area. And at the top, they had a, uh, well, water would be piped up and then would pour out into this bucket. And as soon as the bucket was set up so that as soon as the water was full, it would tip over and pour into the next bucket, flip back up, and water would begin pouring into that bucket again. Once the second bucket was full, it would tip over. And so pretty soon you had all of the buckets, you know, pouring water into the next bucket down. 
And I was thinking a lot about uh, Brett's question where he was basically saying, you know, here's my variable income. What do I do? And it's a lot like that. You have lean months and you have big surplus months and you want to always have your priorities straight. So if I were organizing my categories in YNAB, I would organize them according to priority. I would say, well, I have to eat. We have to have shelter. We have to keep the lights on. We, you know, those types of things, those bare necessities, those would be at the top of my list. So when I made very little money or made a lot of money, I would make sure those were taken care of. Then you would just simply move down the list in YNAB until your surplus ran out. If you didn't have a lot of money, at least you would know that your bases were covered. So just to kind of recap really quick, and then we'll wrap up. Number one is only budget money you have. Do not predict your variable income. You will be wrong every time. Number two is to look ahead and foresee rainy day expenses. So you recognize that your expenses are greater than you think they are. They're not all monthly. And there's a bump to your actual monthly expenses. I call them your true expenses when you factor in larger, less frequent expenses. So you make sure those are all set up as categories as well. And then number three, you prioritize those categories from necessities all the way down to nice to haves. As big surplus months happen, you fill up those categories that maybe have to be skipped once or twice or three months in a row, perhaps. One other thing really quick, if you are having lean months for quite a while, and then you have a surplus month, you may even be in a situation where you want to pad your necessities more, where you say, man, I don't even know if next month I'm going to make enough to cover those. So in this surplus month, I'm going to take some of that and shove it off into next month and use it there. That's one last thing to consider. So it's kind of uh, focused on the freelancer, but a lot of us have variable incomes. So I hope hopefully uh, you get some mileage out of it. Until next time, follow YNAB's four rules and you will win financially. You have not budgeted like this.